Welcome to a new episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. Telly and I are here in Gilbert Hills State Forest, Foxborough, Massachusetts, today to continue the conversation on cairns, piles of stones. We're going to show you three distinctive cairns that are called split boulder or split stone cairns. Why they're so important is because while many structures uh, of ancient origin have an unknown purpose or it's shrouded a bit, a bit of mystery, cairns like this, split stone cairns, rocks set into the gap between large boulders, uh, very often uh, played the part of a conduit, of a medium between uh, underworld and middle world in ancient Native American in New England ceremonies. Very often, those ceremonies related to winter solstice, where the belief is the ceremony would con be conducted to assist in the sun spirit and the water spirit leaving upper world and middle world and going to the underworld for the winter. In the spring equinox, there would be a similar reverse ceremony bringing those two spirits back up. Very quickly, middle world, underworld, upper world didn't have the same connotations uh, as it does in, uh, in, in religions today. There was nothing bad, inherently bad or evil in the underworld. There were good spirits, there were bad spirits, regardless of the plane of their existence. Uh, so this is the first one we will uh, take a look at. We are situated uh, right uh, next to the snake effigy in episode 10. And we're going to see a theme here because the next one we'll visit is embedded in the snake effigy in episode 11. And the last one we're going to see is the shape of it is eerily similar to a structure well known in the uh, Stonehenge of Americas in, uh, in Salem, New Hampshire, a very well researched Native American ritual site. And, uh, and we're gonna make a little comparison there as well. All right, let's get to it. You can see off in the distance the snake effigy uh, that we found associated with this split stone cairn. And in fact, we are going to come back to this site because there are a number of ceremonial structures here. But today is about split stone cairns. So you can see get that out of the, you can see the split here between these boulders. And it is filled with a number of stones that carry through to the front side. It also has this stone here we're going to see from the other side, but that in all likelihood represents a niche. The cairn, interestingly enough, moves off down here. So stones all the way down this side, similar to the connected cairns we saw in the last episodes. Here we see the split stone cairn carrying through here to these stones, that stone there. And this top stone in all likelihood represents a niche. Niches, if you haven't seen the other episodes, uh, we've seen them time and time again here. They represent areas to leave offerings that would entice the spirits during their ceremonies to come forth. So niches and split stone cairns often used in conjunction. This split stone cairn there carries all the way down to this spot here and then out a little bit. When we think about the ceremonial area and we will come back uh, to that to this spot in some of our future episodes there is a prayer seat down here and just over that rise there is the linear cairn or connected cairn that we saw in uh, the last episode. So, so another point about split stone cairns is uh, that while many structures that we see out here are not always clear as to exactly how they were used or in what context of what ceremony, split stone cairns and niches uh, have been referenced in a number of different documents and a lot of research in, in particular in the book Manitou by Maver and Dix and also a significant amount of research in New Hampshire at a site called the Stonehenge of the Americas. And so whether 
in some in some cases uh, stones were placed in the niche as part of the ceremony by people or they were placed in there as a uh, as a catalyst between the spirit worlds there's been enough research done that split stone cairns are amongst the the whole uh, body of structures relatively well known uh, even though there's still a lot of mystery and a lot to be learned all right let's take a look at uh, our other split stone cairns so we are at the stone wall slash 600 foot snake effigy from episode 10. about halfway into this wall the wall itself carries up over a boulder you can see this embedded boulder right here but it doesn't just carry over it actually approaches a split here now in this wall there are a number of what i would consider traditional ceremonial features niches uh, in particular lintel stones gaps and i covered those details all in episode 10. but we want to focus on here is uh, this particular split stone cairn so you can see the gap here it's uh it's not easy to see here but below the, the needles here a row of stones here through this up to this stone and one below it so i wouldn't consider this a niche uh, at all it's a fairly contiguous line of stones that go through and come out on that side so if we, see, we go around this so if we go around this split stone you see the wall carrying in a semicircular fashion very unusual shape for a wall whether it's farmer wall or ceremonial structure and we can see that split stone coming out here a very large gap intentionally made in here that goes all the way through to that split and we can see the split through the other side and now here on this side a pretty clear lintel stone lintel stone is the top stone of uh, doorways it would be uh, the same another use of that term in this case the top stone of a niche in which it represents the lid of the niche the roof of the niche or another uh, ability to, to carry stones over the top of it and we'll see that in some other structures coming up in future episodes all right we are at a split stone split boulder cairn the northern part of gilbert hills and uh, this i've selected this one because it has a variety of interesting and different attributes than the other ones we've seen. To start with, I just want to draw some similarity to uh, a structure that has not only been uh, found at the Stonehenge of Americas and uh, proven to be incorporated into ceremonies there, but there was also a pendant of exactly the same shape, a stone pendant found there as well. So as we take a look here, just see how this rises up flattens out at the top and comes straight down. So let's take a quick look at that uh, item from Stonehenge America. What I'd like to do here is take the time to make a comparison uh, between our third cairn in this episode, the one on the right in this image, and a stone known to be a marker for sunrise at the solstice in the Stonehenge of Americas, a very famous site that was uh, so vast and well preserved that it's been able to serve as a research area to understand stone structures and even the uh, the entire nature of the ceremonies that were performed there. What I like about this comparison is that these stones both line up north to south. The one at the Stonehenge has the high point facing north. Ours has the high point facing south, but they both have the same orientation. So the prospect here is that given the angle of the shape of our cairn, it could have served a similar purpose to be marking the sunrise at the solstice as we see in Stonehenge of America. All right. And for a deep dive into 
the Stonehenge of America. I recommend Mary Gage's book, America's Stonehenge Deciphered. Fascinating insight to the structures and ceremony. All right, as we take a look at the structure as a whole, come through toward the rear of it, we see these, these stones really are nearly mirror images of each other. The center and the stones, I didn't dig down deep into the, in the soil there, but the stones come up about halfway, they're visible, and they don't fill it up all the way like some of the other ones we've seen. As we carry around, we're going to see uh, some stones around it, but as you see Tully over there, one thing that is interesting is a depression or a bowl in front of Quintel. See him walking down into that bowl and up. So there's a bowl in front of this structure uh, and depressions were also known, and I'll uh, cite the source in the, uh, in the description, but depressions in the ground were also known to be portals that could have been used in uh, spirits relating uh, to underworld ceremonies. This opening here, and we've seen this exact configuration in uh, a niche as well, but it opens to, make sure I can see that, it opens to noon, opens in the direction of where the sun would be at noon, that direction, in, uh, in the winter solstice. And we've seen uh, niches that do the same thing. So if you can imagine the sun at the lowest point of the year tracking across the sky this way, it hits right here uh, at noon. So it would be illuminated at that halfway through the, uh, the year from that standpoint, halfway through the day of the winter solstice. All right, so what have we seen here in the three split stone cairn examples in Gilbert Hills? The first two uh, were incorporated with, uh, in an area with a number of other uh, features and other, and other structures. The one we opened this segment with uh, had uh, around it uh, the snake effigy, a cave, uh, a, um, a, a prayer seat, and then also a connected cairn that led into another cave. So a whole network uh, up in that first site. The second site, which was a 600 foot snake effigy, had a number of features built into the wall or the body of the snake, in including one uh, that was its uh, split stone cairn. And then this one here stands alone in the woods. There, I couldn't find another feature or structure nearby that I could recognize, uh, but we are uh, very high on a hilltop uh, at the at the northern part and almost the highest part of the forest and this one uh, has a very interesting symmetry to it I'm sitting or standing in the depression in front of it a depression is known to be uh, used for portals during ceremonies and then a, a very symmetrical split stone cairn uh, behind me here all right the next episode we're going to uh, get into um, a very unique and rare type of of niche. Uh, I didn't include it in the niche uh, episode because it is uh, so rare and so unique it, it deserved its own uh, its own episode. All right, as always, appreciate you watching. See you next time.